Good afternoon. <clears throat> Welcome to the Wayward Widow. I have to change out my sweater. It's too warm. I washed this. I turned it inside out, washed it in the machine, and it just, it has a million pulls on it. A million. I have one of those <clears throat> little machines, <clears throat> battery operated, that you can run over a shirt to take those off. So I have to, I have it in the drawer right there. So I have to get that out and see if I can neaten it up a little bit that I can get a couple more wares out of it. This was from Timu. Um, I guess in the past I must have hand washed it. I don't know. Even as I was machine washing it, I'm thinking maybe I shouldn't do this. But um, it was perfect until I machine washed it. So now it's looking like this. I don't know if I did this. Well, I don't think I did this. Um, the body is your temple. Keep it pure and clean for the soul to reside in. The action is protect the gates to your temple by setting clear boundaries. Learn to prioritize self-care and give yourself permission to say no. I think I think the saying no is the hardest thing that we go through. That's really hard just to say no, I'm sorry I can't do that or no I can't go or no I don't want to or no. Just no. I got my B cup. better stir. Yesterday was 24 weeks or six months since Sky passed away and I had the worst day ever. I sent out a couple of messages in the morning and I, I, I couldn't function the rest of the day. Couldn't and didn't. Um, even now I have a screaming headache. I just am this morning now getting caught up on some messages that I have but typically every morning I will reach out to like everybody on my list and at least say hi How are you okay like yesterday was just bad I was so tired hang on I have to I have to see if I have ibuprofen Okay, let's see. I was up in the middle of the night. I fell asleep at like eight o'clock. And I was up at 3.30 to go to the bathroom. I took two ibuprofen. I have one in my case. I don't like to leave like the whole bottle of ibuprofen, but I leave some in my case. So, So it was it was it was a shit show yesterday and this morning I had therapy scheduled and I called at eight o'clock no I went online on my chart and I canceled online and just said I'm not up to it I'm just I'm not up to it and I know we're supposed to go to therapy when we're at our worst but it doesn't work I also on Monday got notification that it was the day for the in-person grief group and I declined going because, well, I don't have transportation and I don't want to take an Uber up there. So that was that. I did talk to my daughter yesterday for almost two hours. We had the best talk ever. That was in the morning. That was 10 o'clock my time, 7 a.m. her time. Her mind, her mind is like mine. We had a great talk about marriage, dating, men, women, um, Marcus Aurelius meditations. She's getting the book. Because I said something about the Stoics and she said, you read the Stoics? And I said, yeah, I love Marcus Aurelius and Seneca and Diogenes, like they're my go-to Stoics. And she said, oh, I want to get the meditations book at some point. And I'm like, I got it. And I showed it to her and she's like, I can't believe you have meditations. Like, what did you think? I said, well, I've read it through three times. I have notes. <laughs> I 
I love talking to her. So we're going to set aside a FaceTime where we're just going to talk about her marriage and how she knew she was in love and all that stuff. So my friend's coming up at 1. It's like 12.30 now. He's going to take me to get spring water. I have three empty one-gallon containers, and he's going to take me to the bank because I have to do a little business at the bank. So I want to thank everyone for the continued birthday wishes and little gifts. Um, uh, I want to thank my friend in California. Um, I didn't ask her first, but um, so I'm not going to name names, but um, a gift card was sent. Thank you so much. I'm going to use that and add it to the Amazon gift card that I have. Um, I have a balance, so I'm going to add that to it. And I want to get a hair straightener because my hair is going to lay a whole lot better with a hair straightener. I want to get a really nice one. So thank you. You know who you are. Um, I was really surprised. Like I, that really surprised me. And um, um, I also got a little gift through um, an online source, which definitely surprised me. So you know who you are. I thanked you this morning. Um, much appreciated. I don't know. I think that I'm just gonna save. I'm just going to save that for a rainy day. Uh, I watched Kelly DeMarco this morning. She has a new video out. Their, eight, their 16 year old dog, Cash, um, was put down today or yesterday. And um, he, was, um, he was in pain and it was time. And she did a beautiful video tribute to Cash. If, if you can handle that kind of thing, I would suggest you go over to Kelly Isabel DeMarco and watch her video about cash. Um, if, it, if you're a crier with dog death and stuff, don't watch it. Don't watch it. If it's a trigger, don't watch it. Uh, but I found it so beautiful. She does such beautiful videos. I'm also watching his, the guy's name is John. The husband is John. His wife is Heather. She's got early onset dementia. It's the same situation as Trey and Teresa Pippin. If anybody watched Trey and Teresa Pippin, Teresa Pippin had early onset dementia. She was in her 50s, and her death was quick. Um, and John's wife, Heather, has gone in the same direction. So he's vlogging it. And I'll tell you what, I've, I'm learning... I learned a little bit about dementia through Trey Pippin and Teresa, but I'm learning a whole lot more th through John and Heather because he's showing a whole lot more. And that's the one thing that I would not do with Sky. You know, him and I had a lot of talks about what he was going through and how his body changed and what it was like for him. And we talked about the channel and we talked about, you know, all that. and. He said it was okay with him, but it wasn't okay with me. You know, I didn't feel as though it was okay to put what he was going through on here. That was a me thing, um, especially as it got real bad, because uh, it was real bad. But I want to just talk for a couple minutes about feelings of guilt feelings of frustration, anger, um, impatience, um, and then all the positives, all the times we could say we did a good job. Because I've learned as a full-time caregiver when Sky was alive, and it was just me and him for a very long time, trying to keep him as healthy as I could, cleaned up, shaved, dressed, fed, the whole nine yards. Excuse me the whole nine yards you go through a lot of emotions like a lot and there were days I got through the day I got them all washed shaved lotion on them had his pills he had good food it was a good day you know and I would get in bed at night and I'm like you did good today poet and the next day or the day after Mm -mm. 
there were there were days I'd get into bed and I would just lay there and cry. My whole body would hurt from moving him, pulling him up, turning him, propping him. Before I had um, the draw sheet, that blue draw sheet that I show, and I'll show it again for any new people. But if you're moving your person around, get a draw sheet. Go on Amazon, get the blue vinyl draw sheet. Um, it was a lifesaver, but I still had to turn him get him to hold on to the railing, put the draw sheet underneath him, turn him the other way, pull the draw sheet through, and then um, put the bed down flat, put his feet up, and then pull him up to the head of the bed because he would wiggle down. There were days I would get in bed and I, every part of me hurt. Like my shoulders, my back, every part of me hurt so bad. And so when you're in that kind of situation and you feel that bad, um, you're laying there thinking like, how long can I do this? So then all the, all the guilt of what if I can't do this? What if I have to go the nursing home route? What if I have to go against what we talked about? What if I have no choice? And he would say sometimes, poet, if you have to put me in a home because it's too much on you, do it. And that would just give me the oomph to say no one more day one more day one more day because I promised him no nursing home the draw sheet was a huge help um, there was one time one time he wiggled out of the hospital bed not a clue I don't have a clue how he did that and he was sitting on the floor against the bed now I had been in the shower and I came out and there's, and he's sitting, holding onto the railing, sitting on the floor up against the bed. And I'm like, oh my God, how did you do that? And he said, I don't know. What did I do? He didn't even know what he did. And so I said, don't move, don't move. Because I wanted to get the draw sheet behind him so that I can try and get him back up into the bed. That was my goal. But he moved and he tipped over and was down on the floor. Nothing I could do. I got the draw sheet underneath him. I pulled him out into the middle of the living room. I put a pillow underneath him. I gave him blankets. There was nothing I could put under him. I could not pick him up on my own and get him back up in that bed. So I had to wait until my friend, my old friend could come up and it wasn't long, but still. And then he took one end of the draw sheet, I took the other end, and we picked him up and put him back in the bed. But boy, oh boy, talk about a new awareness, feelings of guilt. I was frustrated with him, with Sky. I'm like, what are you doing? You know, why are you doing this? Then you feel guilty because you get frustrated at the person that you're taking care of. I had moments where I was so worn. I had moments where I was like, everything's different for us now. You know, there's no... There's going to be no trips, no vacations, no eating dinner together again, no him sitting at the table, no grocery shopping together, no nothing. And the realization of that could create, could and did create some anger in me, some frustration, some giving up, some hopelessness, all those negative feelings that you don't want to have when your loved one is dying. But let's face it, we're all human and we're tired and we're scared and we're lonely and we're doing it on our own. Um, there's not the help out there for someone, for me anyway, because I didn't have family, either my family or his family, to be there 24 seven or at all to help me with him, right? And um, so I went through all of the emotions. The end of the day, like, I got this. I felt so good about myself. And then other days where I just was like, I can't do this another day. I can't. I would go from loving him and being so okay with the situation, like feeling powerful, like I got it, I, I can do it, you know, I can do it all on my own, no problems, to I can't do this. I can't do it, don't want to do it. I don't want the responsibility. Why me? Why him? I would get angry at the doctors, angry at God, angry at the universe. 
ang just angry, angry at the pharmacist if medications weren't ready, angry at the medications if they didn't work and he would get sicker on the medications. So then I was constantly juggling what's going to work and what wasn't. So the range of emotions was just like, you know, it was like um, taking care of him like around the clock. The times that where I could sit down on my own without needing to tend to him at all and just have a cup of tea or a nice coffee or a meal. I just did that on my own. And then I had some guilt like I should be sitting over next to him and having this meal with him. But sometimes I just had to have that time to myself. Sometimes I just had to. Um, putting a TV show on for him to hopefully help his brain so that he could, you know, think clearer. He could figure things out. Like I was doing everything under the sun I could think of to keep this working because the dementia was starting to set in and he would have bouts of anger and he would have bouts of rage and he would, he would not believe the things that were happening. We had this struggle with his iPad. He has an iPad. There's his iPad. It's an Apple. He's it's the only one we have. We switched from phone to iPad for him because he was having trouble typing. He was having trouble seeing the letters. Um, his vision was greatly affected with the disease. So we invested in the, in the iPad. It was almost $700. And uh, I got a screen, a heavy duty screen for on it, protector. And he, and here's his, uh, this was the picture he had on the whole time he had the iPad, the meditation. And one day he just swore up and down that was not his iPad. He fought me tooth and nail. He said he etched his name in the back of the iPad. And he kept taking this iPad and turning it over. And he kept running his hands all over the back, trying to find that etching. Of course, he never etched his name in the iPad. But when he worked, he would etch his name in, the to in his tools. When he was um, a gardener and he was an archaeologist, he would etch his name in all those things. So there was confusion there. And he would fight me about this iPad. I would give him the iPad, I'd have it all charged, and he'd say, I don't want this, this isn't mine. This is not mine, this is somebody else's. Mine was stolen. He would, he would start yelling, mine was stolen. A woman with black hair came in and stole my iPad. I'm like, no honey, this is the only iPad we have. But mine had my name in the back. This went on for weeks. I finally got to a point where I said, okay, I won't give you the iPad. So I, he handed it back to me and that was that. That lasted for about a day. And then he said, do I have an iPad? I'm like, yep, you do have an iPad. Do you want to try it? Well, is it mine? I said, I'll tell you what, use this temporary one until we get yours, until we make sure yours is fixed. And then that worked. Then he used this one, but I had to go around it, you know, I had to go around the belt. So if you're a caregiver, do not feel guilty for what you're feeling because you're going to go through the whole gamut. Every single thing, good and bad, you can feel, you're going to feel. Guarantee. Absolutely guarantee. And then after he passed away, then I started second guessing everything that led up to his death. Did I follow his instructions? Should I have taken him to the hospital? Should I have done this? Should I have not done that? I went through all that. The guilt on top of guilt on top of guilt. It never ended. It was weeks before I could sort everything out and talking with a whole lot of people. And now it's coming to peace to terms with God, with the universe, with his doctor, with myself, with you know, being on my own, all that. You're going to go through it. If you're a caregiver, you're going to go through it. Um, don't carry it. Don't carry the negative. Please don't. I'm going to go. I'm going to finish what I have left of that. Um, I'm soon going to go get my spring water and go to the bank and I think stop in the store real quickly to um, 
pick up a couple more grocery items that I wasn't able to carry. Um, I'm thinking about getting one of those baskets that you push, you put your bags in and push, but then I'd have to carry it in the store. Well, what I could do though is like hook it, if it has hooks, hook it onto the grocery cart, get what I need, and then go outside and then open up the cart and put the bags in the cart and push the cart. I could do that. Uh, Cause it is a bit of a nuisance to have to keep going back and forth to the store, you know? So I'm gonna go, I hope everybody's okay enough. Um, you'll be getting messages from me, the people who do, you will. Yesterday, was it was a Tuesday, it was that day, it was 24 weeks, six months, I had a rough time, I had a rough time. 